Okay, and welcome to today's talk for today. This is Vadra Shura, and we're doing something different today. So um, I'm asking this fine gentleman in front of me, do you want to say who you are? Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Yes, my name is Sangha Shura. I'm uh, living down in Killaloo, and uh, I live here with my family. And um, I, I run and facilitate classes for the Killaloo Meditation Centre, which is a, a tree rat and a group down here. Great, great. Sangashira and I are old friends. We, we once shared four months in the valley, in the, in the mountain valley together when I was getting ordained in a small hut. Uh, so it's lovely to be here with you. So Sangashira, I'm just going to ask you a few questions for today's talk for the day. Uh, the first one is, how has your practice changed since the virus broke out? Well, it's changed in uh, a couple of major ways. I suppose... I now am locked down like other people, and in my lockdown, I'm looking after my three-year-old daughter, uh, which means that uh, I spend time with her from seven in the morning till five in the evening, or sometimes 24 hours. So my time is not my own. So there's a wisdom which uh, is expressed by the archetypal Buddha uh, Ratna Sambhava, called the wisdom of the sameness of all experience. And it's something that I don't really understand. That's a phrase I've heard. Um, but the way I'm looking at it is to not pick and choose what I do. So with a three-year-old all day, I have to be with her. I have to play with her. I have to eat with her. We watch SpongeBob and Peppa Pig together. And uh, there's times when I'd rather be meditating or practicing the cello. But I just bring a kindly awareness to that aversion to what I'm doing and start to attend to the beauty of it and the, how much fun it is to be with a three-year-old. So that's one change. So another change came out of my fear of catching the virus. And uh, because often colds and flus go straight for my lungs, generally speaking, that brought up quite a lot of fear. So uh, I decided to practice as if I am going to get the virus and I am going to end up in that ambulance heading towards the hospital to ICU and funny enough that's been quite a relief so instead of sort of wishing I wasn't going to get it or hoping I won't get this thing I think well okay let's just practice like I am going to catch the virus and that's so when I imagine being in that ambulance heading towards the hospital what would I do well I'd be praying I pray to uh, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to please help me at this time. Uh, please make the bonds between the transcendental and me strong. Make me strong, I suppose, that sort of area. Um, and I suppose what comes out of that is uh, preparing the ground to be able to uh, connect in that way to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and to be able to feel confident in what's going on and in my practice. So that means everything I do uh, is preparing the ground for an encounter with reality. So that's really interesting, Sankashura. So what kind of things do you think help prepare the ground then? Well, I think uh, an attitude, as I, as I was saying, of not picking and choosing my experience and moving towards what's actually going on uh, uh, in my life. I mean, as well as the virus outside recently, it had an infestation of rats, which was pretty terrifying. Um, so that was quite an intense uh, experience, which is, I think, really good for my practice, though I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, I think, obviously, meditation, qigong, music and appreciation of nature, and very importantly, communication with my friends in the order and spiritual friends. That's great, Sangashura. So you mentioned the cello there. Maybe it'd be worth sharing what you do for a living. Yes, for, for a living, I play with the Irish Chamber Orchestra, mainly. That's my main job. And I do other work with the cello, play the, the National Symphony Orchestra, and sometimes the Irish Film Orchestra, which is a session orchestra. Um, but of course, at the moment, the Irish Chamber Orchestra aren't working. So I get up in the morning and uh, often will play one of the first three Bach cello suites, ones I know. And 
well, they're beautiful and it has a very uh, positive effect and it keeps my hand in also with the cello. And, 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 and how important do you think connection with beauty like that is at times like this? Well, I think it's, it's crucial really because um, as Buddhists, we want to be as in touch with the reality as possible. And the more beauty there is, the more our hearts will be open to what's actually going on. So I think it's very important, very important. I mean, as well as music for me and nature, I do uh, a visualization practice of uh, Green Tara, who's incredibly beautiful. So Green Tara, yeah, is one of the um, archetypal Bodhisattva Buddha images that 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 uh, people reflect upon, that people visualize in Buddhist practice. Do you want to say a bit more about that aspect of your practice, Sangashira? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, when uh, when I first came to Ireland, I remember Sangharachit had said to the order that he was concerned that there wasn't a, enough emphasis on other power, which really uh, struck me. Actually, I was on retreat in Cavan when I heard this. Um, and so for me, Green Tara is a, a beautiful image that conveys other power. So I just like to open up to other power. I mean, just that really. Um, I could say the transcendental, I could say lots of things, but I like to keep it sort of mysterious. Mm. So it, and it's a, it's a, it's a source of great strength actually, just to let go of my own preoccupations or my own worries and my own personal development and just let go into something much greater. So any last bits of advice or tips for people in these times, Sangashir? Well, I suppose coming from my own practice, I'd say that we're in a, in a space where it's like being in an enforced retreat. So uh, there's this intensity which is sort of descended on people's home life. And <clears throat> I learned from Sangharachita that you need intensity for change. So it's actually something very valuable, but you've got to move towards it, enjoy it, open up to it and let it transform you and just learn to be with it. And I have to, I have to remind myself because uh, it can get pretty intense here, um, that this is a good thing and to, to embrace it really.